Nerds. 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 What is a nerd? Hey kids, you're listening to the Radioactive Nerd. And now, on with the show. Look at me. I'm dancing. Yeah. Welcome to episode 61 of the Radioactive Nerd. This is Big K, and joining us as always is Roman Frost and I Got Issues. How you doing, guys? <laughs> I'm doing fine. This should be called the Frozen episode. I don't know. I'm what, bundled up like Kenny. I don't know what you're talking South about. Park. I don't know what you're talking about because uh, officially today we were three degrees warmer than Texas up here in Canada. It was awesome. We actually hit, uh, you know, well, I guess 32 degrees Fahrenheit today. Well, yeah. yeah you keep pushing your high down on our lows, and it's just totally screwing all the weather up. Yeah, I mean, it's negative 10. We have we had to call snow plows in because. Texas, we don't have snow plows, <laughs> evidently, and uh, the Super Bowl's being done literally 30 minutes from my house, and it's a madhouse. It's horrible. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm actually enjoying the weather. We're going to be uh, above freezing tomorrow by two or three degrees, so that's going to be good. Which is good and bad, because really... We're guaranteed it's going to get slippery, and then we're going back into a deep freeze. So it'll be nice for the couple hours that we're walking around without. Well, I'm just not going to go out after it starts freezing again. That's true. Frost, are are you hearing the same shit I am right now? Dude, I'm yeah. Walking around with no jackets on because it's above freezing. I mean, I actually went and walked the dog that we're fostering right now. We my my girlfriend just picked up a dog from the Humane Society. It didn't take very long. I actually thought it was going to be a little bit sooner, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, I went outside and just walked the dog, like, a few hours ago and uh, basically didn't go out with a – went out without a jacket. It was actually quite pleasant. <laughs> I mean, he was in Boston, if you guys remember last year, you know, since we're talking about packs later on in the show. In shorts. No big deal. Issues and I are freezing to death. We, we had to take a cab, wasn't it, Issues? We were – Oh, yeah. Big K's walking around with, like, no jacket on, you know, it walking the streets of Boston. It, it, was, it was a little nippy. It, was, it wasn't that cold. Africa's hot. That's all I know. And I'm getting, I'm getting back on the boat, and I'm going back. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't take any more. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, what, what about some of these? everybody about the weather thing, but, but to a certain extent... We've been going through it forever, so uh, I don't really feel bad. Yeah. Have fun, yay! Hey, so that's and, and a bad little we... bit of what's going on, you know, in the world is we're all frozen down here in hey, the states. It could be worse. We could be in the middle of like a civil war. And yeah, like, you Egypt. Know, wow, that is absolutely nuts. Like, I don't know what is going on over there exactly because I haven't paid a whole lot of attention. Just I know people are dying now. And I, I can give re- you the synopsis of stuff. If you're a reporter, um. I know it's not safe. Because <laughs> they're beating up reporters There's, now. Didn't, like, Anderson Cooper or something get it the other day? Like I don't know. He comes, yo, know, he goes to any hood in America, he's going to get it. I mean, he's just got that face to beat up. But they got no internet. They got no telephone. They got nothing over there. And oh, what I see... Back now. They got all that shit back now. Oh, did they? Yeah. But, you know... I mean, really, it's just because they want the president out. I mean, but isn't he up for re-election like this fall? He, uh, yeah, but I think he already said that he's not. Co- Listen to us; we're talking politics. I know, right? It, it, it's well, that's how serious really, it is. It's, it's, like, it's not even our politics. It's just like you know, Africa's politics. Well, Roman I mean, truly believes it's, it's the beginning to World War Three. Ah, uh, I believe much, that conspiracy. Much, <laughs> this whole this whole Middle East is going to destabilize. And then we're fucked because everybody's going to start going to war and people are going to start launching nukes. And yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> isn't the uh, in that little book there, it states that the end of the world, Armageddon, happens in the Middle East? These, these are the end times. And you know what? It's people that are uh, part of certain conspiracies that are thinking, fuck, the whole Mayan thing is not going to pan out. 2012. 
Yeah, yeah, you have to, get so your tickets you have to actually create something that's going to end up being that bad by that time. So this is just the beginnings of the end. Well, you know, this is funny. I think we're sort of becoming this weird show. Last week we gave we gave the religion breakdown of Jews. Now we're talking about <laughs> now we're talking about the biblical. No more gaming. We're doing nothing but uh, political science stuff. <laughs> I don't know. What's, what's uh, sudden? It's, I, am, I am watching this shit for the last ten days on TV, and they're doing some crazy shit to each other, you know, and. The pro-government guys, when they came in and started fucking smacking people around with sticks and whips on camel, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty hu humorous because <laughs> the way they came and did it, it was funny. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I will not. I would not run into a crowd first on a camel hitting everybody I went by because I know I'm going to get beat up and killed. That's stupid. Yeah. But the but funny thing is that Roman and I actually know somebody that is in Egypt right now. Yeah, she's there right now. Uh, for one of my former employees, but I'm yeah, sure there's a. I was uh, watching on Twitter, and there's a lot of people in the gaming industry that have you know families and stuff that are over there and watching some of that. It's just really kind of scary. I mean, the whole, the whole thing's crazy. Yeah. Now something just slipped by really, really quick, and I cannot let this go. Your ex employee from a gas station is over in <laughs> Egypt. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Retard, she used to be here. She went back to Egypt. She's an Egyptian. She came here, lived here. She was working for me for a while. Then she moved back to Egypt for school. <laughs> Breaking down them stereotypes, boy, I tell you. Wow. Speaking of retards, oh, listen. Okay, so I'm watching all this shit for the last 10 days. And these pro government guys come out and start doing their stuff. And they're throwing Molotov cocktails at the anti-government guys. And it's just kind of funny, you know, because, you know, the firebombs hit and they cheer. Yay, yay, yay. This one pro-government pro guy comes out and he whips a Molotov cocktail at the side of a building. While the building sets on fire and there's a big flash of light and then the dude runs away. But the dude is fully engulfed in flames. Oh, my and he's God. Off the fire. He said, Well, that's why he ran away. I mean, what are you going to do? Stand yeah. there and burn? So I, I stopped the TV. Stop, right drop, away. and roll, damn it. You don't yeah, run. I stopped the TV. I rewind it. I, I call over Roman's girl. I say, Raina, is this guy, did this guy just set himself on fire? <laughs> and she's like, What? And we had to look at the very top corner of the, of the news feed. Because it's it's just small. It wasn't like a close up view of just this guy. He was in the very top corner by himself. But he set himself completely on fire because I replayed it like five times. <laughs> He's it was like the it was like the worst Molotov cocktail firebomb I mean fail ever. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. It. I couldn't believe it. I just I'm upset you didn't actually record it. Like, I mean, that would have been awesome to have as, like, a little snippet. <laughs> it's probably, it's probably, there. somebody's probably got it on. Anyways, so what do we got in the gaming world? This uh, I know, Roman, you picked up Dead Space. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, Dead Space 2. You know what? I that's just the first one. So, I wasn't really going to pick up the second one at first, but... I thought, screw it, the commercials are dragging me into it, and all the talk about it is dragging me in. So I went on and I picked it up. I traded in my Epic Mickey, and I traded it in my Gold. Not Honor. Epic Mickey. I traded in Epic Mickey, yes. Anyways, uh, so I got Dead Space 2 and Ultimate Alliance 2. He uh, got multiple <laughs> Ultimate. <laughs> He's on the second one, guys. He's finally left oh, the first man, one behind. Congratulations. He is on Marvel yeah, Ultimate no. Alliance 2. That is great. So That's after great. all the trade-ins, it cost me like six bucks, and I was like, okay, cool, I'm good with spending six dollars, whatever. Uh, but Dead Space 2 is creepy as hell. Uh, I watched the movie, and I played a little bit of the game, uh, but fuck, it is creepy. Was there a movie like with the game? Well, the first, the, first move, the first game had a movie, an animated feature that you could, uh, well, that you that I watched, and it's good. Uh, and then they do a little bit of a recap in the second one, uh, basically tell you what's happened up till this point, and uh, then you get right into the game. And it is creepy, creepy shit. 
Uh, for example, and it's not ruining anything for anybody that hasn't played it, but uh, very early on in the game, uh, you're in a straitjacket, and this dude cuts you free and then cuts his own throat. Yeah, I saw that in the actual, like, first first and ten on SFX-360. They had the first ten minutes of the game. Yeah, like, it's the first, it's right at the very start. It's messed, and you know what? I'm playing it, and it's giving me the creeps. It's giving me that feeling that, you know, you used to play uh, the older games that would just freak out, like Resident Evils and stuff like that, but it's intense, man, and there's a lot of... Uh, close combat stuff and some of these uh, necromorphs or whatever they're called are, are fucking scary creatures and uh, there's some mess of shit going on. The game now is it is based good. like a, a first person view like Fallout or is it's it... Third, third person. It's a third person. Third so person. Above, and be, above and back but uh, I haven't I didn't play the first one so I didn't know how intricate some of the stuff was but you can upgrade a whole ton of shit and uh, and there's a lot of weapons and suit upgrades and whatever else but it's a good game, man. Like I'm having, I'm having a good time so far. I'm only about 45 minutes in, but uh, I'm having a good time. I'm now, are you going to finish this one, or are you going to get too creeped out to finish it like you did with Alan Wake? <laughs> you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I was thinking about Alan Wake while I was playing Dead Space 2 today, and uh, I might actually go back and finish it. I'm just saying it's not. I still own the thing. I haven't traded it in. I only <laughs> trade in the games I don't like. Right. It's all good. But uh, yeah, no. If you haven't played it, go pick it up. It's pretty sweet. It's the Dead Space Two is not a renter. It's it's worth buying, I would say. Yeah. Also had some good demos drop. Bullet Storm. I don't know if you guys got to check that out. Uh, Sandwich did a little bit of uh, news on Bullet Storm and Crisis Two Force uh, during the week. Bullet Storm guys, the demo is amazing. I had fun with it. I don't know if you guys got to check it out. No, I, Bulletstorm. What what the hell game is that one? Are you serious? Yeah. Why don't you just tell wow. us, just give us a little synopsis there of uh, the game there, Frost. Bulletstorm uh, was uh, is a little child from People Can Fly Studio and Epic Studios, Epic Games. Oh, the other one with uh, Cliffy B. Um, where you got like uh, it looks like all uh, Unreal Tournament. Um. Yeah, kind of, sort of. It's uh, got a little gravity gun. It can pick up things, throw things down. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's uh, check out the demo. It's up on the marketplace. Oh, I know why I haven't known anything about it. But Xbox is working. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Finally, it comes out. Every time we put a game in, it just so red rings. So you, you haven't still you still haven't got that thing fixed. That's nah, man. Wow. Why don't you ship that shit off to Crazy and let him take a look at it for you? He doesn't trust Possibly. Anyone. He'll do it. If he All right. He's up, crazy, he'll take a look at it for you. Yeah, the the warranty is done. I mean, that's yeah, it even yeah, after you, the three you, years you they gave lose, you, right? it's still past that. No, send it off to Crazy. He'll fix it for you. And then uh, we had some more news with the. Uh, I know that Issues was all ready for the PSP. Yeah, I mean it's it it's something that it should have been before. Um, the one thing I like is that they're totally not worried about this whole 3D gaming thing. Right. But who knows? Maybe with a little bit of software updates or whatever, it could possibly be 3D. Who the hell knows? But um, I'm digging the dual thumbsticks. But I'm. I got to play with it because, I mean, it's like the whole six axis thing now. It's basically the controller um, that you have for your PS3. And, well, you know, the, games are going to look basically like being on. I mean, what's the purpose of buying a PS3 now if you're going to have all that in there? Well, they're saying it's the going to be the, completely the power the of the PS3. And that is absolutely yeah. like, are you kidding? Like, why <laughs> is the PS3 so freaking huge if. They could build a handheld now that has so much powerful. Even the slim when they redid the. That's PS3. the Blu-ray player. That's why. No, yeah. no, no. You, it should it should be about the size of the Wii if this is the case. Really, I mean, there should be a PS3 slim, slim, slim. You know. Well, it wasn't at the, the. Well, no, the Go that was, uh, you know, and and I, I we had a little discussion. Um, I think it was probably between all of us when we were talking about the whole. Um, 
the digital versus media. Right. Uh, one thing I'm, I was excited about is that they got rid of them damn uh, UMD disc because they're a piece of shit. All right. I, I like the the fact that it's more of a card based thing, um, like uh, the DS games, you know. And now they're also having it so that you can just download the game, you know, via through GameStop and you know the Sony store, and you know they, it's like they combine the PS uh, PSP Go and the DS together in one and slap the big Sony tag on it. That's how I see it. But the prices would scare the hell out of me. I mean, there's rumors there's going to be $300, $350. For a handheld, no. Nah, it, uh, it, possibly it's going to sell, but I, I, I don't want to touch it for that price. It's got to be around the $200. Yeah, I, I still don't think there's enough information for me to make really a real huge decision on it one way or the other. I mean, I'd like to see it, like you guys said, and uh, see what else is going on. But the other thing that's surprising, unless I missed something, there wasn't any real huge game announcements with it, you know, that they said anything about. Well, I mean, they announced... Uh, they announced like six or like, seven. There's Uncharted, Killzone, Wipeout, Resistance, Little Big Planet, yeah. Hustle Kings, and Hot Shots Golf. I mean, that's yeah. the ones they have yeah, listed with. Yeah, but nothing... You would think if they're going to launch this that there would be some sort of, you know... You guys know what I'm saying. Yeah, something yeah, big no, that, Something huge, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it, I I think the uh, with Apple, Apple changed the game as far as the portable gaming thing. I mean, you got to be honest with that. Something it, it, you need a game that you can just be able to pick up, play with, and then you know put down or go back to a later base. So I you, I don't think they're really going to be trying to launch like these super in depth games because that's where consoles come come to play. You know, uh, the portable media I see is you know how to play Madden, you know uh, NBA Live. Uh, the, the baseball game they got there, that, that's the shit that you play on a portable game. Yeah, I don't know. There's no telling, you know. This, this is what it has to be, is, is that they have to have enough shit in there that's, and, and cheap enough to bring me back over. If they can bring me back over to the, if Sony can bring me back over to them, then there might be a glimmer of hope for them in the world, but I don't know, man. The PS3, I, I wasn't interested. The PSPs, no PSP Go, no. But if this thing is as powerful as they say it's going to be, and it can do what it can, uh, there might be some hope after all. Okay. Well, uh, as you guys know, we're coming up on our our Gamers Gone Wild party, and um, as tradition has it, we're going to be picking a very special VIP, and we'll have him on next after the break. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, so everybody stick around for that, and uh, we'll be right back. Right, and we are back, and as promised, we have something special in this part of the segment of the show. It has become a tradition on the Radioactive Nerd to, every year at PAX East, Gamers Gone Wild, we select a VIP. Last year, our VIP winner was Issues, and as you can tell, he has not left the show since then. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and it's not for lack of trying like not to get rid of him. Right, right. I mean, he just keeps showing up. And, you know, we kind of learn to love them. So it's like a little virus or a sickness. You know, you just, the, the cells, they go dormant, but they just stick around and just keep coming back. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so Frosty, why don't you tell us who our VIP is? Well, it's issues again. Yeah, it's issues again. Yay. <laughs> if it is, I quit. <laughs> yeah, no, we quit. I'll re up in my contract for another year. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. Uh, we thought about replacing uh, issues with uh, Jeff Bridges, but he wasn't available. Jeff so, Bridges. Yeah. Tron. You couldn't find anybody better. Uh, Tracy Morgan, maybe. I know, right? Well I, th well, I figured since we're doing everything with Gamers Outreach Foundation, I'm also um, going to be sending in with them on the panel at PAX. And everything that we've done with the military and, and the Gamers Outreach people have done with the military, we decided to go out and find a very special young man that we're going to introduce to you. He is in the military, and uh, he's going to come along with us. 
Uh, let me introduce Sergeant Daniel Bean. How are you doing, Sergeant Daniel Bean? How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Frost. This is awesome. Uh, well, congratulations. Um, a little bit about Sergeant Bean here. Uh, he is a UAV op pilot for Task Force Odin. Is that correct? That's right. You can wiki us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. does that mean like you get to like you know basically play real life video games like flying around? You know. I wish it was that exciting. No, it's pretty boring actually. It's like if you had to just play one level over and over and over again and you were the absolute master there's nothing else you can learn and you just do it 12 hours a day every day <laughs> so no it's but it's like a microsoft flight simulator then like yeah yeah it's like microsoft airport flight simulator. airport and nothing ever happens <laughs> yeah but, you but, don't really know why you're playing it you kind of enjoy it you're like this this is cool i think and you just keep doing it but well let, let me hold on wait 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 you're, you're selling yourself too short i mean because there's Explain to the average listener, there's different types of drones. You just don't fly a drone. You fly a no. very cool <laughs> drone. We, we um, Task Force Odin, fortunately, I don't know how I got slotted for the unit. I guess I just got lucky. But we fly the, um, basically, the point of Odin is it's a test platform to prove to the Air Force that we don't really need their Predator drones. We fly the Predator, the the one in all the movies, basically. Uh, like Eagle Eye and stuff like that. And uh, basically the issue was the Army said uh, there's communication problems. When we're working with a predator, something has to go, you know, there's there's always more middlemen when you go from branch to branch. So we're going to try and prove to you that we don't need you. And then on top of that, the Army wanted to do it with, instead of like the Air Force does, they have X F-16 pilots and their jet fighter pilots once they're like broken and can't fly anymore, can't remain on flight status, they fly their predators. The army wanted to go. We can do it with all enlisted people and pay them like one tenth the price as you, and get the job done just as well. So that's my tax that's kind dollars of hard at work. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's here's the cool part though. What is your loadout on your drone? This is this is the part. Uh, we originally, when we got there in Afghanistan, we had one Hellfire. And then we had to do a little bit more work to – uh, our commander worked with the mechanics and the civilians back home to try and work into our contract because it's so strict on what you can and can't do with the bird. But they redid the weight and balance, and we ended up with two, and they're looking at putting four on now. Sweet. So you can just <laughs> – you can fly through the mountains of Af Afghanistan and light it up Afghanistan, like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and light it up like Christmas. Right. Yeah. yeah, we always kept two birds in the sky, two hellfires each, and then you know, so whatever we needed. Hopefully, I mean, you're never shooting that much, but hopefully, if one's out, they go back and reload, and then the other one stays up and handles the business till the other guy gets back. So awesome. Now, the the interesting thing too is beforehand, before you went over, you were a competitive gamer, right? Yeah, yeah, I was way too into competitive gaming. <laughs> so you you decided to take it to real life. <laughs> yeah yeah i wish i didn't because the uh i was i was heavy into halo 2 for a long time and then halo 3 came around and i was like uh this game kind of sucks just because i don't know they kept getting more complicated they're like oh we're gonna add more details and lighting and bushes on all the levels and it just kind of i don't know it bothered me so i didn't like that one as much I, I started playing call of duty 4 a lot and that was fun but the europe the european servers were a lot more competitive so i played on that and then uh all of a sudden, with like in a three-week window, I found out about this job in the army, and I'm just sitting around after high school, wasting time figuring out if I want to apply to college. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just do that because I'd heard of like some other people going to fly UAVs and whatnot. So I was like, oh, I could do it too. I'll, so you know, give that a shot. What, basically, what you're saying is, in an effort to be kind of lazy, you end up <laughs> yeah. basically enrolling in the military, where you're probably going to have to do a lot more work in the long run. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a bright move. I didn't really think about it, but. <laughs> It turned out pretty good. Well, let, let me ask you this question. In being a gamer and then going over there and doing your job, did being a gamer help you? Uh, more or less, yeah. I think there's a lot of little things that you know you wouldn't think about, but maybe if you were in heavy into competitive gaming like I was, it definitely lend benefit to you in my job field at least. Because, well, I mean, I know at the schoolhouse when I was first learning, the first platform I was trained on was the Shadow. That's... Uh, Shadow Pioneer, you probably know it as a bunch of different things. If you ever saw it, it's just a little 11 foot wingspan, rotary engine, sounds like a lawnmower in the sky or a weed whacker. 
and that thing you have just this one joystick on the platform and that controls the payload. And we'd be going through the class and you see all these people like 30, 35 year old guys coming from other, other job fields. Cause a lot of time it'd be like a broken infantry guy who can't do his job anymore, but wants to keep helping. So he switches into the UAV field and they'd, they'd come over and they're like struggling cause the sticks inverted and you know, he's pushing up trying to chase a vehicle and going the other way. And it seems like it's the hardest thing in the world for him. And for me, it's just like, Oh, this is no problem. This is how it's designed. I was genetically born to do this. So See, when I play a video game and stuff, if the plane isn't inverted, <laughs> I have a huge problem trying to fly this damn thing. Yeah, it makes no sense. <laughs> well, I, I, I really just don't get it. Like, how can you fly anything that's not inverted? I mean, everybody knows you pull back on the yoke to go up mm-hmm. and yep. you push forward to go down. And yeah, there, there's no option in the shelter to go uninverted on the flight sticks. If you wanted to try and do that, if for whatever reason you weren't comfortable, you either learn it so or no you don't. Menu. So, yeah, big I'm K's all. Yeah, right big now. K's inverted all. Inverted yoke. Yeah, big K's all into that because he's a he's a pilot. So big K's all into all this. It's not yeah, like in the my, movies where you could just talk you over, you know, your headset. Do this. Push this button. <laughs> I mean, it is and it isn't. There's, you know, we don't have like the air force commercials where a reaper comes 200 feet over the uh, mountain, like at 140 knots or something. And then on their camera, it highlights all the enemies in red and then shows you what their loadout is and what they're carrying and what their name is and stuff. You know, it's not that easy. I just want to know, have you ever, have you ever flown your, your, your drone through a tunnel? <laughs> no, I haven't been able to do that yet. Cause you, uh, you'd lose link. That makes no sense at all. It's all satellite driven. So, once you go underneath and you obstruct that, that guy would be screwed. <laughs> now, have you ever spied on chicks on the beach? <laughs> no, but when we were out on uh, out in training in Arizona, there's a lake nearby, and there's there's some good party boat action going on. <laughs> nice, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think so issues... enough about the war questions. What happened on this party boat? Can you just you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's difficult to tell. It's real pixelated, but it looks pretty hot. <laughs> oh, I mean, they don't have high I mean, resolution cameras on them damn things. I mean, you're what are those planes like? Thirty billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think they go for like, and the payload itself is like three million. And you'd think that'd be wow. like the only investment they should put more money into that. Yeah, cause... I mean, what's a high definition camera? Uh, Fifty dollars, sixty dollars? They can't slap one of them on with a hard drive. Yeah. I mean, it's from like six. If you're 6,000 feet above, then you can pretty much, you know, tell if somebody has pockets, you know, if they're wearing a collared shirt or just a regular T-shirt and stuff, little details. But we fly so high because they're all concerned that the enemy's going to hear us or whatever. But let me let me ask you just one question, because there was one story that 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 I that I heard of a mission that you were doing. I don't know if you're able to tell us about you and escorting uh, an Apache unit. Can you talk about that? Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, that was, because uh, it, that's awesome. That me first. That was actually probably one of my proudest days in the military. We got to me and my squad leader, who was a good friend of mine. We were uh, we were going through some training, and a uh, part of the training was just you know live hellfire shots to get one under everybody's belt so nobody felt uncomfortable, I guess. And uh, Part of the training was, well, we did our shot. We got a timed shot, so we had to, like, put lead on or steel on target in, like, plus or minus three seconds. And then right after that, the uh, brigade commander, uh, full bird colonel, who was an ex-Apache pilot, and his co-pilot, CW5, or Chief Warrant Officer 5, uh, this guy's name was Turbo. So on the side of his Apache, it said CW5 Turbo, which was pretty cool. Nice. They contacted us over the radio, and they told us we were going to do the first ever Army Manned, unmanned, teaming, hellfire shot, blind, lethal fires is basically what they call nice. it. Nice. So, so you got called in to the hot zone. Yeah. Basically, the objective was they wanted to prove they wanted to prove that the Apache could stay totally safe with a UAV on scene. So there's a mountain obstructing the Apache from whatever its target is, but we are flying so high we can see over the mountain no problem, and we lay the target. The Apache releases their Hellfire, and it syncs up to our laser code and then shoots up over the mountain because it tries to grab our laser, so we have to make sure we're high enough. The missile flies up over the mountain, grabs our laser, and then zooms down to the enemy. Kaboom. Mission successful. So First ever. I have this. Awesome. That is so awesome. I just have this, this, this scene in mind from Apocalypse Now of 
flight of the Valkyries <laughs> and helicopters coming in, and you guys are just leading the way for them, lighting stuff up, and then here they come. I think it's yeah, it more for- like Duke and Go Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Then we ended up giving the uh, the colonel this really nice fancy plaque for it. I was hoping he'd give us something, but he didn't. That dick. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dick as, uh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, one of the cool things about you being the VIP is, of course, you're going to get the full treatment during PAX weekend and uh, during the Gamers Gone Wild party. Of course, you're going to get all the VIP treatment and uh everything else and get to see everything the the one cool thing too that i want to let the listeners know is immediately after the party you're going back aren't you yeah i got to um well it's it's tricky we're i'm waiting on some paperwork now but that monday morning i have to be in class in an instructor operator class in arizona not even fort hood where i am I got to fly into Arizona and in in process real quick and hopefully make it to my class. Yeah. So this week, that weekend is going to be, that's it for you. That's, this is going to be, so everybody is going to uh, have to take care of you, which I have a small surprise for you in that aspect. Um, A good friend of mine, I know that you're a big, big gamer fan and um, maybe you've heard of a guy named Fatality, right? Oh yeah, that you know that might just have come just up a little before. bit, on sixty minutes or something. I might have seen a special there, or well, I yeah, had a I had a nice kind of yeah, I had a nice hour long phone phone conversation with him today, and uh, he's coming to the party, and he would like to meet, quote unquote. He gave you a nickname, the drone guy. <laughs> the, the what? Sorry, he calls you the drone guy. That is your name now. <laughs> quote All unquote right, so easy like guy myself <laughs> there you go so during the gamers gone wild party you're going to get to hang out with fatality he's going to let you game with him for a little while he wants to hear some war stories he's going to autograph some stuff for you and uh hang out with you awesome for real yeah, absolutely for real so <laughs> Wow, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Absolutely, I knew you were you were a big fan of his, and he was happy to do it. And um, so here's what we have: um, we are calling it Operation Rip the Drone Guy. So, <laughs> oh boy, by I think the I out what that means already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the end of the evening, you you will have to be carried out of the the bar. So does that sound? <laughs> oh man, my mom's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, well that's okay. She can help carry you out. Oh boy. <laughs> so um, we we have that all planned out for you. It's gonna be a fantastic night. We'll be broadcasting live from the event, and uh, you'll get to come sit in with us while we do that. And Fatality wants to have some one-on-one time and talk to you about drones. He's like a big drone fan. He's huge. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm the subject matter expert, so I'm happy to share my knowledge. Awesome. And I know that, I don't know if, uh, Big K, you think we can get Oopy on the line? Well, let's give it a try. Let's give it a shot. I know that the folks, while while Big K is doing that, I know that the folks at Gamers Outreach, um, they heard about this going on and and us picking you as a VIP, and uh, they have something special planned for you, too. Oh, I don't know if I can handle more. Yeah. Hey, Oopy, this is Frost and uh, all the guys. How are you doing? Hey guys, I'm doing good. How are you doing? All right, this is Oopy with the uh, Gamers Outreach Foundation. Oopy, we have our VIP Sergeant Daniel Bean on the phone on on the call with us. Well, that's wonderful. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Oopy. <laughs> and uh, we've already told him that he is our VIP this year, and he's told us a little bit about the military and everything else. And um, I kind of wanted to let you give him a just. A, I know you guys have a lot of things planned, but. Um, let you tell him a little bit about what you guys are talking about doing. I get uh, PAX East is uh, what we're referring to. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Daniel, what we're, we are, would like you um, to be in touch with you to find out what your unit is um, so we can send the package to your a care package to your unit um, where you're deployed. Um, that's wow. one of the things that we do is we send uh, games to the troops. So we'll be in touch in the next few weeks to get information on that. Um, okay, I think we'd I also do that. like <laughs> to um, take you out for lunch uh, while we're 
taxis. And uh, we have a few other things that we're hoping to get up and come up with while we're there. Um, and uh, I don't know how much we're going to come through with, so we'll just keep it as a surprise to make sure it all does. And the other thing is we'd like to know if you'd like to be our ambassador for a year as our military um, spokesperson. Wow. Yes. Yeah, uh, that would be an honor. Yes. And you don't have to do any more. That's amazing <laughs> already. Thank you, Ubi. That is fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping that once a month we can touch base with you and uh, find out what's going over there, and maybe you can find people in your unit or people that you meet that also game and maybe share their story so that people can understand what it's like to be deployed and how much gaming means to them. Oh, yeah, that's too easy. I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, that makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You, know what, you guys You guys are really missing this. Like, I'm getting a whole different view of this call. You should see this guy's smile right now because I'm the only one that can see his video. Yeah. Like, his <laughs> smile is absolutely just, like, from ear to ear. It is absolutely incredible to see. Yeah, my cheeks hurt right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. That is totally awesome. awesome. That's supposed to be the way. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Well, thank you. It. Thank you um, very we much. We have a lot, a bunch of people that uh, are really looking forward to meeting you. Um, we've already started passing the word, and because uh, um, I had a little heads up on it, Stephanie, who uh, heads up the uh, the military section um, of Gamers Outreach, she is really looking forward to her. Her husband um, is, I believe, I'm not sure if he's being deployed again or if he's signing up to be deployed again. Um, he's, it goes back and forth. So he's going to be there as well. So he's looking forward to meeting you. Um, he wasn't sure if he was going to be in training or not, but he's not because I know he's still in the reserve. Um, so he'll be there. So And then our Zach, our executive director, and then we have another guy, um, Andy. I know that uh, the guys met him at PAX West. He's um, a coach, actually, for one of the MLG teams, Trigger Downs, and he'll be there as well to do some interviews with you. Wow. <laughs> So, so you, keep your schedule open. Don't be cooking anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got nothing <laughs> between, planned except between to try and Radio all this. Between Radio and Gamers Outreach, we'll be keeping you busy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're going to get the VIP treatment and entourage all over the place during PAX the entire weekend. So you're taken care of. And I don't know if you actually know that all of us that are on this call right now um, are from another gaming community. And I know as soon as they all hear about it. Um, they'll be more than willing to meet you as well and uh, make a relationship as well. So the tag community or the adult gamer, if that's what you want to call it, um, <laughs> I know we'll be really excited. Um, you're already listed down to join us for our dinner. So um, you're listed as our VIP of Gamers Outreach and uh, Radioactive Nerd VIP, but they don't know who it is. <laughs> so now they're going to find wow. out from this call, from this podcast. Wow. So, so uh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know, Big K. What does his face look like over there on the screen? I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, he's, he's actually turning a little bit of shade of red. I thought these, uh, these army oh, guys I... had a little bit uh, more of. Actually, a... is there any way we could just take a picture of his face right now, and then after this, everything is all done, we'll have the before and after. Yeah, we, we totally need <laughs> <do> to. <laughs> This is a ridiculous. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah, well, Roman and hey, we'll have to think of something Canadian to bring down with us so he can take a Canadian momentum to the to uh, when he's deployed. Yeah, I already told him that he needs to stick a uh, radioactive nerd sticker on a Hellfire missile for me. Done. And, Consider it done. <laughs> they'll go. They'll be one on every missile that goes up. I want to see it go off too. I want it <laughs> <laughs> easy. Consider it done. I want to see it go the off the chain. doesn't go off, they go hunt us down. This son of a bitch, he tried to kill me. <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> they Google the radioactive nerd symbol. <laughs> well, uh, again, as always, Oopy, thank you so much for uh, jumping on board with this um, and uh, helping us. Uh, oh, it's our pleasure. You actually are doing something that's very dear to our heart, as you know. Um, and Daniel will definitely be in touch. Uh, I know Frost has all your information. And uh, we'd like to get you know, some information about your unit and stuff so we can start getting stuff together so we can get it shipped out so that when you're there, you can maybe do a video of uh, unpacking it and the expressions from the guys when they find out that they're getting a package. Oh, man, of you. they're going to go nuts. <laughs> Thank I you know. so much, Yuppie. Well, uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Our 
VIP for Gamers Gone Wild this year, Sergeant Daniel Bean. How about a big round of applause for our, our military guy? Congratulations. And uh, with that, we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Hello, Sandwich here for Radioactive Nerd. So, Valentine's Day is coming up, and I'm a little, I'm a little down. I'm, I'm starting to reminisce, thinking about the ones that got away. And in particular, I'm thinking about one man that we spent some great time together. We'd stay up all night long playing Zelda on the NES. And near the end of our relationship, he dedicated a song to me. It really touched me. And he, he told me that he thought of me every time he heard it. So I would like to sing a little bit of it for you, kind of as a dedication back to him for how, how much he touched me in my heart. Like big butts and I cannot lie Those other brothers can't deny When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist And a round thing in your face Know you get sprung, pull up tough touched me, why it moved me. I mean, he told me that my butt was stuffed, you know? How many times in one lifetime do, do, do people tell you something like that, you know? This has been Sandwich for Radioactive Nerd. Thank you so much for listening along, and I can't wait to see you next time. And don't be too hard on yourself for the ones you let get away. <laughs> all right and we are back hey guys how awesome is that you could tell how excited he was but, but how uh, about yeah, that uh, commercial uh, break i mean oopy uh really uh sort of got personal there yeah, something oh, sorry. that something sorry, that answered about the size of his unit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the listeners totally missed it out because we stopped the recording. But yeah, what happened, BK? Well, uh, uh, Oopy uh, basically, you know, was just uh, asking him some information uh, about, like, you know, his unit, and that's exactly how it came out. It's like, you know, she meant how many men are in his unit, at, in the military sense, but it came out as, you know. She wanted to know the size of this year. Then, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that definitely starts it off, but then there's this whole slew of you know uh, uh, military terms that followed. But if somebody were to walk by during that conversation, it walk by two or three times. They're like, "What the hell are they talking well, about?" Well, yeah, they were talking <laughs> exactly. about coming and going up and down yeah, in his, on his unit and stuff like that. Yeah. And, wow. yeah I, we we got it. We have to record the breaks, man. We got. To. I know. We need to start recording through the just, breaks. Just record from the beginning and just let it go. Just let it go. But anyway, thanks to uh, Elaine and uh, and everybody over at Gamers Outreach for uh, extending a hand to do something very cool for him. And and I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm looking forward to hanging out with him. He, I mean, what a fantastic story. I mean, how cool is that? Dude blows shit up. Simple okay. as that. Just gotta love it. I think I, I, I'm more excited about uh, getting some sort of response from his unit and from people down the road when uh, we do end up getting some stuff. So you, so yeah, you, we can't even say it. We can't. We can't even do it anymore. Uh, I can't even say it. I can't Roman, even Roman, say unit anymore. Roman Pope's his unit is stimulated. All I know is I don't want anybody from his unit spitting at me. Yeah. Oh, I'm more boy. excited about. <laughs> oh no, he out. didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> Wait, listen, 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 listen. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to find out how the guys that you work with. I'm not even going to be able to do the rest of the show. Let's just, let's just end it. 
Or when, or <laughs> Let's just keep saying unit. unit. Yeah, that was it. She, she she wanted to know the size of his unit, how big of a package that you know they may receive. It was like what? Yeah, it was really. It. I mean, she was very innocent and everything else, very very serious, but it did not come out that way. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yes, we are. He's he's actually started up, guys. I just got a little mail. He started up his own Twitter account just so he can tweet live from the event, and it's at Drone Guy. So wow, there you go. At Drone Guy. So follow him on Twitter, and he's going to be tweeting during the whole event, taking pictures and everything else. So go follow him. And uh, it's everybody's going to be buying him drinks. He's probably only get like one picture and two tweets, and then after he's, he's going to be out. <laughs> he's going to be out. I've been assured by uh, you know everybody there that he's going to get bought at least one drink. He's 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 going to be out at the end of the evening. That's all that's going to happen. I, I want to see him tweeting though when he's actually out doing the drone stuff. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be great, right? <laughs> oh, going to send bomb in cave now boom <laughs> sent <laughs> i just i mean how cool would it be to have a radioactive nerd sticker on a hellfire missile well he said he'd do it just, i mean i don't know if that's yeah. if you're allowed to do that kind of stuff but no they are, they can absolutely he said he will yeah and that's all we need is to have this thing not go off they see the sticker <laughs> it's the only like, one that did. watch the halloween episode and be like that son of a bitch sold this out <laughs> It's the only one that doesn't bomb. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they're totally come after you issues. <laughs> it pulls a 180 and goes right for his apartment. On, so. <laughs> they think he was the leader. He just had to put on his Halloween costume. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's the one episode that's like... Salami and bacon, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But anyway, that's really exciting and uh, looking forward to... Uh, Gamers Gone Wild and doing the, we'll be doing a live broadcast through the the whole party and broadcasting on the internet and everything else. And there's some really other cool stuff that's coming up that we can't talk about yet. That's going to be exciting. And um, I mean, you just read the stuff online, you can see that just a lot going to happen. I mean, it's not even just with Gamers Gone Wild. I think PAX East this year is going to be huge. Yeah. I mean, it, I, it, it, the way it sounds, it's it's going to be bigger than the West. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. And guys, I mean, help me here. Tell the listeners get there early. I mean, you guys remember last year. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're if you're planning to come to the party, and the you know the doors open at eight, don't be fashionably late and show up at like ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. You won't get in. You won't get in. It it's it, yeah. just show up no. at the time. In fact, you know what? You might want to go there half an hour before the doors open, an hour before the yeah. doors open. You're gonna leave packs. Half the day, and if you if you got to go get all dappered up to go to a party or whatever, mm-hmm. then you don't even go to PAX. Just spend your time getting ready in a hotel and then go get in line because last year the line was freaking all the way around the corner. You know, Adam Sessler shows up. They wouldn't even let him in. He was yeah, he like, oh, I'm on G4. <laughs> he couldn't get in. He, he goes downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 issues is not kidding. The the line was around the block. He's not kidding when he says that. I mean, literally, it was around the block and around the building. And there's so much cool stuff. I mean, Carlos Farrow DJing. What's up, bitches? That's I can't wait to see that. That's that's gonna be sick. It's gonna be awesome, awesome in itself. And uh, all the you know <laughs> everything that they're planning with too old to play and imminent and SFX and I mean this is gonna be huge. Radioactive nerd doing a live broadcast. Well, if 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 we can stay sober long enough, that's going to be awesome as well. You know what we need? Yeah. We need, did, we need, did you listen to episode coaches. sixteen of the show? Yeah, episode sixteen. No, listen. We need two couches, and then while two of us are off getting drunk, the <laughs> other two can be interviewing people, and then those two can go get drunk, <laughs> and the other two can come back and tag team podcasting. People. Tag team podcasting. <laughs> We're going to put this bitch on a rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But anyway, guys, something something interesting that's been announced that I can not that I can talk about now that's been, been in the plannings. Um, you guys remember our good buddy Avery? Yes. Yes, right? I remember Avery. Avery? Yeah. And um, uh, Avery is going to be moderating a panel that I'm sitting on 
Friday at four o'clock about uh, gamers and and uh, doing things for others and charities, along with uh, Zach and Stephanie with Gamers Outreach and the guys with Able Gamers. So come out and see me there. It's at four o'clock, and then we'll get done and run across the street and go party at the. Are you going to be taking questions from the audience? I think we are. Yeah. I'm going to so plant myself in there and just <laughs> random. Oh, no. you got it. That's what I'm thinking. Oh. Excuse me. Sabotage. Excuse me. I have a are question. You, you yes, yes. Right? yes. Oh, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Do you like bacon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We got to end the show. I swear. I can't do it any longer. Units and bacon. So much fun. I know it. I know, but it's got to come to the end. But anyway, this has been uh, episode 61. Uh, issues, got any shout outs? Hey, I just want to shout out to everybody, to, you know, all the listeners. I mean, it, without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. Absolutely. What about you, Big K? Uh. Or you want to save yours for last? You I'll can just wrap save it. mine for last, and I'll just wrap up the show. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Roman. Uh, I always have big shout outs to the people over at Tag. Uh, we got the Tag Games starting on February 27th. It's a Sunday, I believe, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. Uh, the gaming committee and a bunch of people over there doing a lot of uh, volunteering to get that going. So uh, props to you guys. And, uh, yeah, uh, just looking forward to, you know, stuff coming up here. So love tag. Love you guys. That's my shout out. Yay. Awesome. want to shout out to uh, our VIP. Uh, I'm just going to call him S- Sergeant Drone Guy, and uh, I'm going to name the operation of getting him drunk. Operation. I forgot to ask him if he's really at the gym, though. Yeah. Operation. Let's call it Operation Rip Drone Guy. That's that's it. That's what we're going to call it. How about instead of drop the guy, just go Rip Drone. Okay, Rip Oper- Drone. Something like that. And uh, thanks to uh, Oopy and Stephanie and all them for stepping in and helping out, uh, giving him the VIP treatment. Thanks to uh, SFX 360 also. They've, they're doing some stuff to help out. And shout out to uh, Fatality that listens to the show. Thanks for stepping up, buddy, and agreeing to fly in just to do this. And uh, um, thanks to the listeners, man. I mean, th- our show has gotten huge, and some other stuff is going to happen you know, during packs and after packs that we'll be able to talk about that would not be possible without all of our fans. It's, it's been awesome. And uh, I'll shut up. Big K? Yeah, I was wondering, like, is he going to keep going for another 25 freaking minutes? I was, that was my Oscar acceptance speech. Come on. It's like, I was waiting for the, the music. The music has been playing for, like, the last five minutes. Right. Oh. I was waiting to get the music Jeez. play off, but all it right. didn't happen. I'm going to make my shout out simple and easy, and it ha- does have to do with what Rome was talking about, and it's the tag games. I just want to say... You are now talking to the five-time MVP of the Olympics and medal leader. Uh, oh, no. And, and there's only been four so Man. far. So I just want to start off with just end the show Straight with Straight out that. of rehab. He's just going right in for it. So there that we're... is the end of the show. If you want to leave us a voicemail, you can call us at 206-338-0681 or leave us a Twitter on RN Radio. Or just send us an email at nerd at radioactivenerd.com. And uh, thank you for listening to episode 61. We will see you in a couple of weeks. You've been listening to the Radioactive Nerd. Tune in next week for more nerdy goodness. Goodbye.